What a press conference that was, Donald Trump. Man, he is setting some things up. He is a master brander. We're going to talk about that today, and we are going to answer your questions. We are trying out a new platform to record this show called StreamYard. We are making the switch for Reform Jellical from a platform that became unstable, basically, from how many uh, people were using it. So I'm testing something out, and I don't want Reform Jellical to suffer. So how to build a tent, you guys are going to be my guinea pigs. Welcome to the show. My name is Matt Williams. This is your first time here. Welcome. The show is about how to make you successful. We talk about business, politics, or not really politics. I mean, sometimes politics because it has to do with economics. And we talk about finances and just any of the ways to help you be successful in your careers, your startups, your side hustles and all that stuff. We're part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. Go over to flfnetwork.com. Put in HGBT in the memo field. You will get a sweet mug like that one, a Fight, Laugh, Feast t-shirt. I should wear it someday. You get $100 off a conference. You get tons of other great benefits. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm seeing someone watching on Twitter saying the video is, looks much clearer. Perfect. Now let's just hopefully this records sound and video as well. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can email me, Matt, at howtobuildatent.com. You can find me on all the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. This is really cool. It's cool. I can see all of your comments from Facebook, YouTube, Twitter all at once. Very cool. Luckily, I don't edit my shows, so... I'm, uh, being live isn't a big issue, but I'm really glad you guys are here. So I was really kind of expecting Trump to say that he has had a plan, he was rolling it out, and there's going to be a date where the economy was going to be open. And let me know, you can put your questions or your comments or your thoughts if you watch the press conference as well um, in the chat, and I'll be able to see him. But I really thought that he was going to open it up. And in fact, I was going to get my hair cut. I might even let my wife cut my hair because... I just thought this was going to go on for another couple of weeks. My hair is so long, I have to wear a hat every single time. So I got my HTBT hat on. But I was hoping that he would open up the economy. I'd go get my hair cut and everything would be good. But he didn't do that. But he did something very interesting. And I want you guys to think about this. And if you haven't seen the press conference, I really encourage you to go and watch it again. Not from a political perspective, not from the, the thing that shall not be named perspective, but thinking of it from how do you control the narrative? Controlling the narrative is really important for your own life, for your company, for your career. And you want to have as much of control over it as possible because that is part of your brand and how you are perceived as an individual, as a professional, as a parent, as a minister, as a pastor, or as a politician in Trump's case is very important. The more control and the more expertise and the more experience that you get and being able to control that narrative uh, is going to help you be successful in life. And you can go through and see what he did. I mean, he was not only did he lay out a video, but he was setting up and he went through a timeline of everything that happened regarding this issue, this this disaster that happened. I can't say it will be censored. And he was talking about what everyone else was saying, what he was saying, how he was right, what the press was saying and what he did, what people were attacking him for and what they're attacking for him now, what are, they're attacking him for now. And, they, and he went back and he basically told the story in front of everybody to see that he was right and everyone else was wrong. It was masterfully done. I highly recommend you go back and you look at it. And if you don't believe me that he's being masterful in that, you think I'm just some kind of you know partisan hack or whatever, go look at his approval numbers. Go look at how many people watch this press conference. That's daily. People are obviously watching because they're scared. They want to know when they can get back to the economy. And honestly, the economy needs to be open right now. Uh, the Cross Politic guys did a great show with Steve Dace. Highly recommend that talking about more of the numbers. But that is a great way for you to see how to control the narrative. Even when other people are trying to control your narrative, trying to control your brand and trying to come against you and damage you. I mean, Trump has an incredible amount of people trying to ruin his reputation, trying to make him seem like something he's not and trying to make him look as bad as possible. And yet he is able still to rise in the poll numbers, rise in approval ratings. And that should be an encouragement for us. Forget the pol politics of it. It should be encouraging for us from a business perspective because there are people in our organizations 
that don't want us to succeed, that will throw us under the bus. There are other companies that we're going to be competing against with our small businesses and our startups that are going to say things to our potential customers, to our current customers that could be damaging. But when you are strongly controlling your narrative and you have a strong brand, those things aren't going to resonate with your customers. They're not going to resonate with people um, that are hearing these things because the brand speaks for itself. And you can just think about different brands that you know of, like Costco. It's my favorite <laughs> favorite of the show. There are things that you know about Costco, right? They have good quality products. They have great return, um, return policy. And if someone said, oh, the return policy, that's not good at all. Like you can't take anything back. It's really hard to get them to give you reimbursement and these things. You would think like, no, I know that's wrong because that's what I have experienced with them. That's what I know. That's what I've heard from other people is they have a great strong brand. And so you can have that too. And one of the great ways to have that strong brand is to controlling the narrative, controlling the story. And he just did a phenomenal job at that. And going through, and this, now I just want to talk to uh, journalists for a second. Now, if you are thinking about getting into the journalist career, journalism field, there's no better time. I'm telling you, there is no better time that the perception and the damage that the media and journalists have done to themselves is irreplaceable, which means there is a void for people to jump into and fill that role because we do need media. We do need the press. We need the press to be on our side. That is to get to the bottom of the story to find out what the facts are, to communicate the facts to us, not by distorting them, not by being uh, biased in such a way that the facts aren't being presented clearly to us, not in a way where they're going to leave things out because it doesn't fit the narrative. There is an incredible opportunity for us, for Christians, for people of um, have that have values, that people have standards, that people are really invested and interested in journalism for what it's supposed to be, to finding out the truth, for telling stories, for being able to hold the government accountable. I don't think any of us want the press to uh, not hold the government accountable, even when it's our person in office, even when it's our uh, party that is controlling Congress. We want the truth. We want people to be honest and we want them to be working for us most of all. After all, we live in America where the people are the ones in charge and we elect people to work for us, not for us to work for them, which that's a whole nother discussion. But I just want to, I really thought this was a great opportunity for us to see and recognize the need for capable journalists, for people that are actually going to be journalists. We desperately need it. We can't just dismiss it. We can't just say that, um, oh, there goes the industry. Who cares? We don't need journalists anymore. It's a desperately needed field. I'm very glad that has come out the the depravity, the decay, it, the Trump administration and Donald Trump specifically has been able to expose that. But now it's time to repair it. It's time to put people in that have integrity and have people that have passion for journalism, not are just not people that are just going to be spokespersons and talking heads for one party, left or right. We don't want any of we can have opinion people. I don't care about that. If you say you're an opinion person, I'm an opinion person. I'm a podcaster. I'm not a journalist. People that are saying they're journalists and that are out there to get the facts and tell the truth should not have opinions that are distorting the facts. And if they do, they should be honest about it and say that they're opinion piece and not, um, not being a journalist. I want to talk about some actually some amazing things that came out of this press conference. And I want to get your questions. If you guys have any questions, comments about any of this, please let me know. I can see them in the chat. I'm trying a new platform. If you're just joining, um, it seems like you guys can hear me and it sounds really good. So I'm very thankful for that. Looking forward to Reform Jellicle Thursday night, 830, 80 Robles. And I do that, which is more of a political, cultural podcast. We have Tom Buck coming on. I feel so bad two weeks ago. Uh, man, we gone on for 15 seconds and the platform dropped us. But uh, Tom is a glutton for punishment, wants to come back. So we're going to have a lot of great stuff to talk about. Don't miss that 830. The same way you're listening to me now, except on the Reformed Jellicle 
channels on the Twitter and uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we're going to be doing this 830. And I hope you join us. Usually it's a Patreon only supported uh, feature where you can watch the show live and ask questions. We can interact with you. Um, but for the next two weeks, because of just all the issues you've had, we're making it alive and available to everyone. So I hope you do join us for that. I want to talk to you about Kingsman Grooming products. Go over to kingsmangroomingpros.com. They have pre-shave, aftershave. <laughs> it smells so good. People make fun of me for saying that. Uh, but I seriously wear their products all the time. You can see them over there. They have beard balms, beard oils. They just make your beard feel good. It gets doing what you want it to do. It doesn't get all crazy. And it's more important than ever now that we can't get haircuts, can't get groomed. Um, so go support a Christian company, a small business, friends of the show, and they have great quality products. And you get a really great discount when you use HTBT. So go over to kingsmangroomingpros.com, check them out, give them a look, support a small business. Right now, small businesses are suffering. Um, so do your best to support them, Kingsman Grooming Products and the other companies um, that you find value from. It's going to be really important. All right, I want to go back to my notes. We're talking about the press conference today. We've talked about controlling the narrative. We, we talked about how important it is for your brand to be strong and examples of how Trump's able to do that and even overcome the obstacles in his way and specifically the press and how that should be an encouragement for us because there are going to be people in our organizations, people that are in the industry that we're in and our startups where there are going to be small businesses that are going to be trying to damage our brand, but that if Trump can do it with all that's going against him, that should be an encouragement to us as well. And it, almost as if the press fell into the trap. As almost if they fell into the trap. The very first question this press conference, after Trump lays out the record, lays out what the press has been doing and treating him wrong and unfairly about, that they said in the beginning he was acting too rashly, he was doing too much, and now he didn't do enough, he was too late, and he laid that out. The very first question he asked, the, the press asked was this. Well, who produced the video that you shared in this press conference. And the video was a timeline of what was happening and, and a collage of people saying one thing and then the other. And the first question was, who produced the video? And the angle was, were you using government resources to pay for a campaign video, ca campaign promotion? And this is what the whole tone of the press corps was today for the most part. I mean, maybe there were a few great, good questions, but for the most part, it was all traps. And in a time like this, and I've said it before, I'm going to say it again because it's really, uh, really frustrating to me with the unknowns, with dealing with China, not being forthright, with the who carrying the propaganda of the Chinese, with so many people saying so many different things that the press is still the one and sole mission is to go after Trump. It's just absolutely despicable. And it just makes them look worse. And again, we need journalists. We need people with integrity to go into this field because we desperately need to have people holding the government accountable. And we haven't had that for so long. And uh, I mean, that's probably one of the byproducts of uh, Trump being um being being elected. All right, we got a question. With your training, I'm gonna here. I'm gonna try to pull this up on the screen. Oh, that's kind of a cool feature. This platform is really cool so far. With your training and experience, how long do you think the economy can survive with a shutdown? Well, <laughs> if anyone has an answer to this question or pretends to have the answer, I should say they're lying to you and they're not being honest. No one knows. No one knows how long we can survive this because it's never been done before. I have, in at least in modern times, I can't remember ever a time where all 50 states declared a national emergency, where we had curfews, where we couldn't go out for except for essential services for what's going to be 45 days. I... I mean, we talk, I forgot who was bringing this point up to me, and it's probably for the best that I don't share their name. But he was saying, you you know, like when you talk about seceding from the union and states breaking away, 
the biggest obstacle and the biggest barrier from that ever being a real possibility was that this, what we are experiencing now could happen, that there could be a shutdown, that economics could collapse. But we're seeing it to this day that we've been doing it and then the government's racking up bills and they're racking up more and more debt. I mean, there are, and even in this press conference talking about another phase four stimulus package. So the answer is, I don't know. But I do know this, that every day we're closed exponentially gets worse. It gets harder for us to get back on track. And why do I say that? Because 50% of people that are employed in our country are from small business. Now, large companies can do things like, hey, we aren't going to lay people off, although we're seeing that. We're seeing them furloughed and things like that. There's a lot of tools that big businesses have that smaller companies don't have as much. Even with these packages and the stimulus that the phase three brought, you could, it's a lot easier to issue debt, junk bonds, and those kinds of things. People that are publicly traded can issue more stock. There's a lot of different tools and a lot more reserves that a big company has. Small businesses don't have that. Most small businesses rely on cash flow month to month and oftentimes are taking short-term loans to cover payroll when people haven't paid right away when they're supposed to, when there's disputes happening, or just normal business. Sometimes you have to float your payroll by getting loans. And so when you start talking about no business for two weeks, no business for 45 days, we're in uncharted territory and it's dangerous. The the cure has been worse than the disease as like the whole slogan has been is the cure can't be worse than the disease. And that's exactly what we are seeing because this is the truth. And this is kind of what people have been starting to talk about. Not only do we have to figure out how to get people back to their normal habits, which if you know anything about psychology, that after 30 days, you form a habit. Well, a lot of us are not going to have the habits of what we used to going to restaurants, going out to bars, going out to movie theaters, going out to public places. We're going to be used to staying at home and we're still going to be reluctant. We're still not going to be going back into the ways that we were and people's business isn't going to just come back. It's not going to just snap back. And so when you say a small business, 50% of the employers of this country, 50% of small businesses I mean, 50% of people that are employed in this country are from small businesses. When you tell them you're not only can't take customers for 45 days, but then when we say you can go back, if it's going to be 45 days, we don't even know if it's going to be that. I'm I'm thinking it's going to be from what Trump's saying. I'm encouraged by it. It seems like he's going to be rolling out plans and steps to get us back. I don't know if sooner than May 1st, but it seems like at least by May 1st, is that after those 45 days of having no customers, then you have to work all over again, spending marketing dollars, spending energy, spending resources on getting them to come back. There's no magic wand that's going to make people just automatically come back to your shop and become a customer. And so that's a very real problem that we're going to have. And that from, so from my training experience, I know just thinking of it from starting up a company, most companies fail. I can't imagine the odds or the likelihood of restarting a company is much better. I honestly don't. I'm not trying to, you know, scare people. I'm not trying to, you know, put fear into you, but it's going to take a lot of work once we get back into things. You're not going to just be right back to where you left off 45 days ago. You're not. We're not. And so it is scary because every single day we close down, it exponentially is worse. Day one was bad. Day 10 is by far way harder for companies to come back from. Day 20, day 30, day 45. I mean, we have we're, when this economy gets back open, quote unquote, uh, we're going to have a tough time ahead of us. It's not going to just all of a sudden be, all right, that's behind us, and let's just plow on like nothing ever happened. Um, hey, what's up? What's going on? Edify show. I... I don't know your name. Sorry, I don't recognize you, but hey, what's going on? Uh, It's really cool being able to see all your guys' chats. If you guys have any more questions, let me know. We're going to be closing this off my HTB that comes out every uh, week, workday. You can find us on podcast and YouTube, How to Build a Tent. Please subscribe, like, share the show. Um, This one will be coming out tomorrow. 
Uh, so if you want to share it or watch it again, feel free to please download it and uh, check it out. Please subscribe. Um, let's see. Ooh, I was hiding one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what's going on? The guy who recommended StreamYard is showing up and watching. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome so far. And I think everyone else watching it appreciates it as well. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be hard. It's going to take a lot of work. We're not we're not going to just be in the clear from um, from just going back to work. There's going to be a lot of work. And it's going to feel like, in my opinion, for small businesses, it's going to feel like um, starting up the business again in a lot of ways. And I don't know if people are expecting that. I don't think people are thinking about what it's going to be like when we get back. We're just desperate to get back to work, which I don't know why we aren't back to work with all the data that we're seeing and things like that. I'm not talking about the narrative from the media, but um, what the real data is. Stanford has been putting out a lot of great work. You know, that left wing kooky Northern California University. Um, they've been putting a lot of um, counter narrative research and information out. Um, that's really interesting. I mean, I'm not saying that everything we've heard from the government and from, you know, the media has been completely wrong. Some of it might have been right. Um, but there is a lot of other things uh, out there, a lot of opposing opinions that aren't on the fringe. The last thing I wanted to say about this press conference that is driving me absolutely nuts is uh, there is one set of questioning to Trump is how dare you have, how dare you say that you have the authority to tell uh, the country to open up? That's the government's role. And almost like the very next question was, how can you expect the states to come out with testing and do things on their own without federal funding? And I just want to make this point really clear to the press and to everyone listening. It's really important for us to remember, if you can't take responsibility for yourself, then don't expect to have control over yourself. Now, I'm a constitutionalist, conservative. I believe in the 10th Amendment. It was funny hearing the press talk about the 10th Amendment like they take it seriously at all. Or the government, the federal government takes it seriously at all because it's a big joke now. But if you think that you can take government money, federal government money as a state and have independence and have your uh, the authority vested in you alone, you're fooling yourself. If you take the cookie, you have to take the chain that comes along with it. And I hope, I hope people see this and saw those questions and made them start to think, do we need federal funding? Do we really need it? Or is our freedom, independence as a state, as a county, as a city, all the way down more important than that? Is it more important for us to be able to be controlled by the people that live within our area? Or should we take the money and let people in Maine vote on what th happens in Florida, what happens in New York, what happens in all these other countries? Because that's essentially what's happening is you're receiving money from other states and you're also receiving the bondage or the yoke of being controlled, at least in part, by those other states as well via the federal government. All right, let's see the last question. There is a, a great, really, there's there are good to get really bad, brother. I keep hearing about this being the next Great Depression. Uh, I don't know. It depends on how long we do this. It depends on how long we stay open. Um, it, it remains to be seen. And like I said, anyone who knows tells you they know what's going to happen, they're lying to you. No one knows what's going to happen because this hasn't been done in modern times, to my recollection, ever, especially at a global scale. Well, with that, please go subscribe, like, share the show, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.